Amen. Amen. Do I Amen. The triune God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who has brought us and sought us? Yes, God. With His redeeming blood. Amen. Oh yes. He loved me and I knew Him. Yes. All my love. Yes. Is due to Him. Yes, sir. He plunged me. Glory. Yes. To victory. Oh yes. Yeah. The need. Uh, uh, the cleansing. Uh, the cleansing. Uh, Amen. Do I? Amen. First of all, my wife. I ain't gonna say nobody else name first. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to stay out the doghouse for a while. <laughs> Amen. I want all my wife to know 35. That's a change in you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. She's not the first lady. She's the only lady. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm glad uh, uh, for her today. So glad she's with me today. Amen. Thank God for the president of this profession. Yeah. Amen. 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 Vice President Coleman, yeah. amen, to uh, Dr. Whitaker, God bless you, sir, amen, and uh, thank God for all the folks from P-Town, Portsmouth, Virginia, amen, amen, thank God, amen, that the Lord would take this bald-headed, got two preachers from Lake Park, amen, and then call him into the gospel ministry, amen, experience trauma, tragedy, but yet the Lord is good. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let me tell you, it is trauma and tragedy yeah. when uh, social services come to your house. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, my mother, who was a single parent, amen, of 10 children, mm -hmm. my oldest brother, amen, had cerebral palsy and dead ridden all of his life. Yeah. And they took all of us Jesus. out from mm -hmm. my mother Jesus. and put us all in the foster home. We was in foster home for five years. And it was tragedy. It was trauma because and then we found out that it was my mother's very best friend who called because she was jealous of my mother. She called and said, Kate Francis can't take care of all those kids. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, it was a tough time, but let me tell you, it was a blessing in those five years. Because it was in those five years that when we started to go to church, yeah. mm. in those five years with good foster parents, that amen, we uh, heard about this man named Jesus. Well, well. Amen. So I just want to encourage you today, and I'm giving you this for free. Amen. <laughs> that God can take your bad situation. Yes, yes it can. Yes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I know he'll do it. I know he'll do it. Amen. Amen to the book of Mark. Mark's gospel, chapter 8. Amen. Trevor. Thank God also for, amen, um, my moderator of the North Virginia Baptist Association. Amen. Moderator Sneed, God bless you, sir. Amen. And to all of my North Virginia uh, colleagues, amen. God bless you. Amen. Good to see all of you on today. Amen. Mark's gospel, chapter 8. And I'm going to read verses 22 through 26. And I'll be reading from the, uh, the NIV. They came to Bethsaida. And some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. I want you to highlight that word brought. Yes, yes, I'm going to come back to that. Mm. He took the blind man by the hand. And I want you to highlight that word took. We're going to talk about that as well. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hand on him, Jesus said, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Mm. Once more, Jesus put his hand on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored. 
and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. To the glory of God. Thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. What you for subject this morning? Amen. The right touch. The right touch. When I started matriculating at um, Samuel the Whit Park School of Theology, one of the first classes I took was New Testament studies. Wow. My professor was a distinguished Dr. Morgan Sanders. Yes, sir. Dr. Sanders, my brother and sisters, took great joy <laughs> in demolishing our Sunday school theology. Yes, he did. Did you have it? He took great joy. He sure did. And he took delight in watching the perplexity on our faces. Mm -hmm. As he began to take apart our biblical understanding <laughs> and pick apart our white European theology. <laughs> One of the things he taught us early on was about these synoptic gospels. <laughs> Amen. And these gospels that, 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 that they uh, might have the same stories, uh -huh. but they are not necessarily in the same order. Because these Gospels, as uh, you well know, were written after the resurrection of Jesus. They were written to uh, a particular people, a particular context, by particular people dealing with particular issues. Right. And often Dr. Sanders would say to us, what the writer would do in redacted form would be to take a specific miracle story and insert them after a spiritual teaching or stories to highlight something that Jesus had just taught. All right. mm -hmm. They would oftentimes put a miracle story right behind or right in front of something Jesus was going to teach about or something Jesus uh, was going to say. My Lord. And that miracle story would be another example of Jesus' supernatural power. But this, uh, in, uh, this is the case uh, uh, with this story that I read to you just a few moments ago. All right. This story is not as simple as showing, uh, once again, that, that, that Jesus' power, amen, uh, uh, to open blinded eyes. All right. It's not as simple or superficial, amen, as giving us an example of the majestic power of the Master and the Messiah. But... When you put this story in first century mind uh -huh. and see where it is placed, it is placed after a story and before another story uh -huh. that would give a message, amen, to us today. All right. The story before, amen, uh, uh, this one is about the feeding of the multitude. Yeah. Stick yeah. with me, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. If you know the story about the feeding of the multitude, the Bible declares that uh, there were uh, 12 baskets full of leftovers. Uh -huh. They get on the boat, the disciples and Jesus, and, 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 and the problem is, uh, uh, is that they get on the boat, and in their haste, amen, they leave 11 baskets and only took one basket with them. Mm. So you have 12 hungry Negroes. <laughs> amen. Twelve hundred disciples looking at one basket, amen, to feed them all. Yeah. When you read the story, you'll see that uh, they begin, amen, to, uh, to have a dialogue back and forth about how in the world are they going to make it? How are they going, amen, to fill their stomachs, amen? How are they going to satisfy their appetites, amen, when uh, there are twelve of them, but only one, one basket? Jesus, amen, says to them, how is it that you have been with me all this time and you still act like you don't know who I am? How is it that you were just with me on the seashore and you watched me feed more than there are more of you? Starting with less than you have 
amen, uh, on them in the first century would have been Jewish hands. Yeah. Or it would have been Roman hands. Right. Am I right about it? In this modern day, amen, this new spirituality, now we have what you call life coaches. And I'm not, and I'm not kicking against life coaches, amen, because they're good in the proper place, amen. We also have, you know, these, are y'all to fit my life type of people. Amen. In this modern day, and we also have Amen. Uh, uh, Steve Harvey telling you to, to to act like a woman, but think like a man, and vice versa. The problem with many of us is that we're listening, Amen, to life coaches and book writers, Amen, that have hands that can't help you. Ah. Have too many people, Amen. Too many churches, Amen, that are uh, uh, having the wrong type of hands, Amen. We're trying to touch people acting like more like a social club uh, than the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Uh, they're leading out the same way that they came in. Yeah. They come and shout and lead the church more chapter up than we uh, Yes, Lord. We touch them, but we cannot transform them. Yeah. Some of us have been getting the wrong touch. Right. We've been getting touches, amen, that thought would uh, make us Somebody. Amen. amen. Uh, so you got touched by marriage. Amen. But you found out it won all what it's cracked up to be. Amen. You got touched by a new job and thought that would make you somebody. Amen. You got touched by education and now you're sticking your nose up at everybody. Else. But today I'm stopping by to declare that there is another touch. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. That you need in order to have vision. Amen. amen. And it is the touch yes, sir. of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Everybody else can touch you. Uh -huh. Amen. You will never be changed. Amen. But if Jesus put his hands on you. Yeah. Uh, I love that song. He touched me. Yeah. Oh, and because of my soul, something happened. And yeah. now I know. Yeah. Me. Yeah. And many people. Yeah. But the question is today, how do I get the touch that will ignite my vision? The first thing to take the text to tell the teacher is that if you're going and that you move to vision, you're going to have to be connected, watch this, to the proper people. Yeah. Amen. Relationships mean everything. Relationships matter, my brother and sister. Who you are connected to has everything to do with everything. You have to be connected to the right kind of people. And the text describes what and who these people are. You need people who will make themselves, watch this, an enemy of your weakness. Ooh. They can stand at what you're going through. And they love you so much, they're going to help you get out of your weakness. Yeah. You need people in your life who are so committed to you being all that God wants you to be that they will agitate you. Yes, sir. Yeah, get on your last nerve, amen, until you get out of everything beneath your purpose, your value, and your potential. That's true. Here's what I love that about the Everybody who brings the man to Jesus can see. Amen. They bring him to Jesus because uh, they want the man to have what they have. Yeah. And that's sight. Amen. Mm -hmm. They bring him to Jesus because uh, they want the man to be able to have the same use of resources that they have. My brother and sister, get away from folks. Amen. Who want to keep you beneath him? All right. Amen. Yeah. And don't want you to elevate. And they have elevated. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You need people in your life, Amen, who want to share what you have and how. Uh, and, and they will tell you how they got what they have, yeah. and they so you can get yours. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because I was told if 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 the Lord is in, if the Lord is blessing your neighbor, then He's in your neighborhood, and maybe you just got next. Amen. Uh -huh. Uh, you are not to have the crab mentality. Yeah. Get rid of those haters, amen. Get rid yeah. of jealous folk and find somebody, amen, to help you get what uh, uh, they've already got. Amen. Yeah. They make themselves in this to your weaknesses, amen. Yeah. Here's the other thing that I like about uh, 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 these kinds of friends. They will initiate the intervention of intercession amen. without your protection. Oh. That's true. That's true. They will, they will initiate the intervention of intercession without your invitation. Say so. Intercession, my brothers and sisters, 
is when I selflessly <laughs> bring somebody else's issue or problem to the presence of the Lord. All right. Yeah. So they bring a man, this man's issue to Jesus' feet. That's intercession. But nowhere in the text that I see where the man asked them to be brought to Jesus. There's nowhere in the text where the man said, take me to Jesus. These friends took their, took their own initiative. Amen. I said they took their own initiative and brought. How they brought? Amen. Because the Greek word for brought suggests that they drug that man to Jesus. Somebody had a plan, man. Somebody had a plan, man. Yeah. Amen. And so that's what that word means in the Greek. Yeah, it suggests that he was drugged to Jesus. It almost implies that they gave him no choice. I need friends in my life, amen, who don't wait till I ask a prayer, but I need friends in my life who are so in touch with the Spirit of God that they got that. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Do you know how you got delivered from some stuff? Somebody pray for you. Uh huh. Do you know how you got out of that self inflicted nonsense? Glory. Somebody pray for you. Yeah. Do you know how some stuff got blocked in your life? Amen. Because you weren't smart enough to use your two good sense work. Somebody pray for you. Amen. And, I, and can I get a witness in here, amen, to give God praise and say, thank you, Lord, that I had a praying mother, I had a praying father, I had a praying grandmother, thank God, thank God, I got some praying friends. Thank God. Lord, the Lord would wrote that song, y'all know, somebody prayed for me, and me on this man, it took the time to pray for me. You need friends to pray for me. All right. Even when. You have not requested prayer. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. If you're going to get your vision, my brother and sister, you're going to have to be connected to the proper people. Yeah. If you're going to get vision, you're going to have to learn, amen, to be patient yeah. in the process. Yeah. Listen to this. You cannot microwave maturity. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Yeah. Anything you get quickly, probably you won't keep too long. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I must be honest because you know we have a whole generation of people who want to work hard and, 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 and don't want to work long for anything. Amen. amen. They want instantaneous stuff. Amen. Amen. They want it quicker than right now. Amen. They want it sooner than not yet. Amen. And that's why, amen, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, churches and, 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 and preachers, amen, uh, pimp and parade themselves as preachers. Uh, should I say, and they tell the folks, they're going to get a blessing if you run around in the church in seven days. Oh, yes. oh this is great. If you do a flip, amen, God's going to wipe out your dead mother. <laughs> <laughs> I can like God with some black Friday Santa Claus. I'm <laughs> scotch down for the glory to give you what you want on the Santa Claus. It don't work that way. Matter of fact, the devil is a liar because God will take you through some stuff. Yes, he will. To make you and mold you. And do what he wants you to be. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. Uh, you have to appreciate, should I say, the journey as much as you appreciate the destination. Yes, sir. Yeah. Watch the process in the text. Yes, Lord. In the process of God getting you where he wants, amen, uh, uh, he wants you to open your eyes to vision, there's going to be a season of separation. Yeah. Watch this. The text says, the people, amen, Brought him. Yeah. Brought him. Brought him. The people brought him. Brought him. And Jesus took him. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus took him. They brought him. Yeah. And Jesus took him. Yes, sir. The people brought him. Yeah. Jesus took him. Yeah. Jesus took him from the people that brought him. Yeah. And, and, and when Jesus took him, amen, uh, he did not invite his friends that brought him. But when Jesus took him, he took him from where uh, they brought him and, 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 and who brought him. Amen. Jesus disconnected him from the people that brought him because uh, their only assignment was to get him to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That was their assignment. Not to go with him where Jesus was taking him. Amen. The mistake 
And uh, he was on the videotape. It was him. <laughs> <laughs> my mama loved him so much. That ain't my son. That ain't my mama. I said that ain't my son.
Don't tell no man. Ain't that so? Lord have mercy. Wait a minute, Jesus. I've been lying. Uh-huh. And I can see. Yeah. And you telling me not to tell nobody? Now, many of you think that I'm going to talk about? Amen. I just can't keep it to myself. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I tell somebody else. Uh, what the Lord has done to me, no, that's not where I'm going. But here's my question. How do I even hide the fact that I cannot see? Because I don't have to tell amen anybody that I can see. Because all they have to do now is watch how I go. Yeah. Because the stuff I used to trip on. We will. 
Yeah!